good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Just go like this if you can hear me. Yes. All right, fantastic. Uh, Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. We're going to get started right on time because I'm a firm believer that if you can't make it to a virtual meeting on time, there's a problem, okay? Especially we're not supposed to be traveling anywhere. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here with me today. We're going to be talking about the nuts and bolts of virtual showings. So please, as we proceed, if you have any questions, Maureen Otto can't hear me. So Maureen, make sure that your speakers are on. If everybody else can hear me, just again, please go like this. Uh, if you have any questions before we begin on things that you may have already done that you have questions about, please put it in the chat. Don't unmute yourself yet. Uh, I have a presentation that I'm going to go through. As you have questions, type it in the chat. I may cover it, or if it's something that I figure that I should cover at that time, I will stop and we will talk about it. Okay, this is very much a presentation, but also a conversation. Uh, my skill set is to help you overcome any temporary challenges you might have uh, in regards to technology because I'm a great problem solver. Uh, if you don't know me, again, I'm a real estate practitioner going on 15 years. I'm an international speaker of the universe. Uh, but my specialty is video, social media, and technology. So I'm here to share that with you. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, fantastic. If you're new to Zoom, and this is one of your, this is probably your 100th Zoom in the last few weeks. But if you don't see everybody right now in like a gallery view or like a Brady Bunch type view, you're going to tap the upper right-hand corner. It says gallery view. Tap that. It's going to go to gallery view where you can see everybody. And then when I share my screen, you should see a full shared screen with everybody else in little squares. So let's get the party started. Come on over here. Okay. So nuts and bolts of virtual showings. First things first, uh, what you want to do is pull out your phone. I want to leave you here with skills for you to use today and tomorrow and the next day. Uh, you should be able to see my screen right now. So you're going to want to download not just you're on Zoom right now. Perhaps you're on Zoom, the web client, which means you're not actually on the program. So you want to create a login and password, an actual profile for Zoom, but also download the app for your mobile device. Okay, because a lot of the recommendations I'm going to make, whether it's for you or for your client, it's going to involve the Zoom app. And it's important that you have it, you know what the interaction is like, the functionality of it, so that you can coach them through it. Okay? Hold on one second, I got somebody who needs to be muted. Okay. So you have the Zoom. Next, you're also gonna need the Google Hangouts app. Um, you, you may have access to it, it's hangouts.google.com on your, on your laptop or desktop, but you're gonna need the app for your mobile phone. You're also going to need the Google Meet app. Okay, again, these are all these are three different apps that you're so far that you need to download. What better time to download it than right now while you have your phone in front of you while you're sitting in this virtual classroom? And then we have a Google Duo app. Uh, if you have a newer Android device, you probably already have this phone or already have this app downloaded. If you have an iPhone, you're probably like you, another Google app but uh, we promise this is cross-platform and you don't have to have a gmail account for it it's one of the examples we're going to give today and then also the facebook messenger app you, you should already have facebook this isn't going to be a social media discussion but you're going to want to make sure that you have the messenger app for your mobile device because that's one of the best ways to do video conferencing okay all right, so first example, I'm gonna kind of walk through different examples and it, if you have questions as we go, just again, type them in the, in, the, in the chat box there. But the first example, buyer's agent calls to show your listing. First, let's celebrate, you're getting a call on your listing. Uh, I've talked to agents all across the country and you know, it, it is our job during this pandemic to provide expert advice for our clients and allow them to make the decision. Uh, I, I don't think you should be advising your clients and saying, this is what I, you should do this, you should do that. You just provide them with, you know, factual data, provide them with the recommendations from NISAR. Uh, if you need to keep, stay up to date with that, it's NISARCOVIDUpdates.com. That's updated on the daily. Uh, they have FAQs on there as far as, it's clearly spelled out what we can and can't do. And then if your local board has anything, you know, above and beyond that, and then also your broker owner. So 
I'm not going to give you advice for you to then go to your broker and say, this is what Jeremiah said. I want you to be safe. I want you to be successful. And I want you to take care of your clients and exceed expectations. All right. So for most of the state, we have virtual, uh, virtual showings that can be scheduled with showing time. If you don't have showing time in your area, same thing, whatever you would have for your showing phone number, you just set it up the way you would a normal showing. So I put a listing in the, in the MLS under showing instructions. If you want to put your phone number instead of showing time, they call you, they want to show it. There's a couple different options. The first option is going to be a virtual tour uh, because again, it's up to the seller. If the seller says, Hey, we we're occupied in this property currently, we do not want anybody to come see it. We are willing to do a virtual tour. Uh, if you can schedule those, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You would, you, you would, um, you would keep the link private. So when they schedule the showing, they have to contact you. You would then send them the link. That is in a way your first showing. Okay. It's very different than somebody walking through the front door. Uh, but these are different times. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a real life example on a property that I listed on Easter Sunday, which was this last Sunday, not a few days ago, but Easter Sunday. We listed on Easter Sunday, the seller was owner occupied. He did not want anybody to show it. Uh, we put in a 360 degree video tour. Uh, numerous agents called, we sent them the link to the tour. One agent who was interested, who had an interested buyer, then called me and, and followed up almost like a second showing and said, hey, can you send us additional photos of the garage, uh, the second story of the garage? Um, and any other photos you can have a close up of the flooring because the flooring was hard to see in the in the pictures what the flooring looked like. From that, that buyer wrote an offer. That offer was accepted. Inspection was done the next day, and that property is currently pending. So things are different, but things are selling. You got to kind of think outside the box. So the first showing can be a tour. I'm going to show you four different ways that you can do that tour because there's no wrong way either. Well, actually, there might be. Um, I don't want you to do. I don't want you to do the, the slideshow of pictures, okay? That is not a virtual tour. If that's what you want to use as one, then they could just click through the listing like this. It's actually better for them. If I have low, low uh, attention span, I can just click through the listing and look at the pictures that way, okay? That is not it. Um, but with, that, with the link for the tour, I'm going to take that link and I'm going to put it into a program called bit.ly, bit.ly, and here's why. It's free for you. Uh, you're gonna create an account with them. But once I put that link in there, it shortens it, number one. Number two, it allows me to, to tell what traffic I'm getting on the link. So in this example, this is what I sent my seller after the first day on the market. We had 89 clicks. Um, and it may be hard for you to see, but on the lower part there, 34% uh, came from realtor.com. 31% came from email, SMS, or direct. Uh, another 30% came from our matrix. And then 4% came from elsewhere. So this is just another way for you to track the activity. If you just put the link out there, you don't know where it's coming from. Uh, you don't have any statistics to report back to your seller. Okay, and I, and I get that on your, if it's super small on your computer, make sure you hit the, the tab at the top that says fit to screen so that it, will, it should expand the view so you can see that a little bit bigger. Uh, but the, the moral of the story is to be able to track the information, just like you would in a regular showing environment. You keep track of your showings. Um, you know, with showing time, you could follow up with them and get feedback on the virtual showing if they thought the price was overpriced, if they thought, you know, the property needed improvement, if the color scheme wasn't what your, your buyer desired. Same kind of way you, you would obtain feedback is the same, how, same way you would do it in a virtual world. Okay, so here are the different formats. The first one is going to be Matterport. Uh, Matterport is not actually a video. I'm going to show you an example uh, in a second. Facebook Live Tour. I'm going to show you another example, a 360 degree tour. I'll show you an example of that. And then I'm going to give you the fourth option is either yourself or the seller can record video clips and then send that to a professional videographer. Okay. I understand that photographers and videographers are not essential people. There are, depending on your area, certain ones that have deemed themselves to be essential by contacting the ESD. It's not my position to tell you whether that's right or wrong. 
but you can send that video footage that either you or your seller get to a professional videographer and have them edit it from their home. That would 100% be compliant. Okay, so I'll give you these four options. I'm gonna click on Matterport. I'm gonna bring you over to Chrome so you could see what I see. One second. Okay, so here we're looking at a, everybody should see my private mansion in the 17th century. I believe that's what it's 17. Yeah, I'm not good at my Roman numerals. Give me a second while that loads. Okay, we're gonna go full screen here. You can see how I can walk through this property. It's a much more immersive experience. Okay, I can look around. Oh, look at the, the wainscoting on the walls. I'm gonna go down to the wine cellar. Look at this, sweet. Check out the kitchen. Everywhere that you see one of these circles, that is actually where the camera was placed and did a 360 degree scan of the property. So I can look up, oh, look at that. I can look down, I can look at the flooring. I can look side to side. I'm gonna go to the pool next. Look at that, man, I need to be cleaned a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, it's a good example that you wanna be sure that your client's property is in tip top shape because I can't remove the dirt that's in that water right now or at the bottom of that pool or whatever's going on there. Uh, so making sure that everything's in its absolute best condition that it can be. Okay, there's the outside. Okay, now if I clicked over here, this is VR, so I could view this in VR. If I had Google Cardboard or Samsung Gear virtual reality, I could click that on my face. I could turn to the left, turn to the right. I could walk through this property virtually, and that would really be a virtual walkthrough. Okay, back to the presentation. Any questions on that so far? That's Matterport. Uh, depending on your area, you should have somebody that can do these for you. I can't tell you whether they're currently doing it or not, uh, but if and when they can, whenever the restrictions might be lifted, I would say get as many of these done as possible if you had anybody in the hopper that was thinking about getting their property on the market. Okay, second one is gonna be a Facebook Live tour. So this is what I would call like the quick and dirty. You know, it doesn't have to be a professionally done. Uh, if you follow me on social media, this is how my number one way of doing the live tours. Uh, let me make sure I am sharing my sound, yes. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero with the Monero team at Remax Realty Group coming to you live. That's right, it's Thunderstruck Thursday. Thunderstruck, say it with me. Thunderstruck Thursday. We're here with a three bedroom, one bath, 1,100 square foot home. And our today's episode of $79,000 listing. We are in East Rochester. That's right, East Side living at its best. We have a three bedroom, one bath. 1100 square foot home on a quiet one-way street. I'm standing in the road right now Can't get me all right, let me flip this around take a look at the house. Look at this Lovely I'm gonna call it gingerbread style kind of I don't know but I'll walk you through the front door here If you're tuning in from outside the Rochester area, this is a $79,000 listing really close to st. John Fisher it's the east side of Rochester, also known as East Rochester. So this brings us, whoa, door swung back into me. Brings us right in to our living room. We got brand new carpet, freshly painted. Cozy. And then an eat-in kitchen. I guess this would be like. Okay, um, I want to show you the whole thing, but you get the idea. I always start in the beginning with... My brand name is Jeremiah J. Man Monero with the Monero team at XYZ Realty. I'm here with a four bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square foot home in the town of, and then I give like a, a, you know, something, who do you know that's looking for the ideal purchaser of that property? And then I would share that with them. Then I make it about the property. So I go from selfie mode to the other way. I then walk through the house. I, I never have a script of what I'm going to say. As you can tell, uh, I just say what I'm going to say. 
okay? Um, it doesn't have to be, don't worry about it being too professional. You know, in this example, that was a live walkthrough without anybody doing it with me. Uh, I could have done that with somebody guiding me through it if that was a, a private showing, okay? So there's a number of different ways uh, we can accomplish that. Uh, okay, we have some man report on there. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Okay, and then next I wanna show you is the 360 degree tour. Uh, this is not a Matterport, it's a 360 degree tour where there's a lot of, a number of different cameras out there. Rico is one of them, R-I-C-O-H, Rico. Uh, it's, it's a lot more cost effective. You can do the 360 degree tour and it actually syncs with the Matterport app and you scan each room and it tells you how much of the room you got and how much more you need to get in order to complete your tour. Uh, but here's an example of that. One moment while it loads. Okay, so this is, and you can see, as I walk through, I can turn to the left, turn to the right. So while it's not Matterport, it's hosted on a, on a website. But very similar, they can get an idea of the ceiling, the floor. Again, the little circles where it is, is where that camera was, was held and where the scan was done. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm not showing. One second. Thanks, guys. You didn't tell me I wasn't showing it to you. Okay. Everybody see that now? I got to look at the videos. Okay. Sorry. I did a whole webinar one time and I didn't share my screen at all. I didn't want that to happen right now. So this is a 360 degree tour. Uh, if you're in the Rochester area, this is Greg, Greg Glazier did this. Um, it's going to be a little bit glitchy because I'm streaming as well as being online. But you can see as the resolution picks up, I can walk through it similar to a Matterport. Okay, so this is the property where the buyer was like, I don't know about those floors. Can you send us another picture of the close up of the floors? And we did. And then this is the one that actually is currently in contract. Okay, I can go floor by floor. That's master bath, upstairs. Master bedroom. Okay, this is a Cape Cod style home, 1200 square feet. But it's 360 degrees, get the idea. Then the last one I wanna show you is a professional tour. So this is a, uh, I'll post this in the, in the remarks or maybe I'll, I'll email it out to everybody after the fact. Uh, let me go to Google Chrome again. Okay. So this is a professionally edited video. So imagine for a second that either you or your, or your seller was able to get video footage, okay? Whether it's with their smartphone, whether it's with an iPad, any other camera, however you're gonna get that footage, there's a number of different ways. You could then send it to a professional videographer, they have a lot of what's called B-roll, which is additional footage of, you know, things in the area, points of interest, just things that can make your video a whole, much, a whole bunch better. Uh, this is just an example of Sky Limitless Media. Actually, I'm gonna rewind it.
Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, Chris, if you're on, Chris, Chris Abasi, if you want to just comment in the, we just paid $3,702.25 with taxes and shipping for a Matterport camera. Uh, on average, I would say it's going to run you for a 2,000 square foot home. It might be $200, whatever that is that 10 cents a square foot, something like that. 10 cents a square foot uh, is a good good estimate. But Chris has John MZ from Sky Limitless did this video. He'll edit a listing video for $200. So keep that in mind. If you take the footage, you could have some, you know, a nice professional product like this. And I know some of you are thinking like, you know, there's no reason why if we can't get into the house or we're not able to show it in person that you have to put out a less than professional product. There are options available. You just kind of have to be more creative and, and think outside the box. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. All right, so uh, in this example, you stay home and the seller does the walkthrough, okay? And this is how, this would be my recommendation. If at all, you can ever do this. We want everybody to stay safe. We want everybody to be socially distant. Uh, in our market, I, I would like to say that the majority of properties that are that have agents going to the home is when the property is vacant, right? Where I can, and I'm saying they're seeing clients, what they're doing is going to the, the vacant property and using a video conferencing type of thing to, to bring their clients in there virtually. So this first example, you stay home, the seller does a walkthrough. And I'm gonna give you step by step. You, the listing agent, stay home. Seller is at the listing where they probably live. If they don't live there, they're going to the listing. Buyer's agent is at their home. Buyers are at their current home, okay? Or their former home because you're gonna sell them this one. Here are some mobile video tips. All right, so just a couple more tips when you're taking your video in the home. Uh, depending on where you're gonna use it, if you can use it on IGTV or you're gonna be using it on Facebook or for a virtual tour that you're gonna have a videographer uh, you know, edit the video for you later. Uh, it's important that you hold it horizontally like this, okay? Horizontally like this. If it's on IGTV, you can hold it like this, okay? Uh, there's different rules of, you know, recent studies have shown actually that the mobile viewing experience is better when you're looking at the device vertically. Can you see that? Yeah, rather than horizontally. But either way, uh, if you're going to be, you know, editing it later, maybe it makes more sense to do it horizontally. You don't have to hold it at eye level. Some people think that holding it this way is better, but what happens is uh, you're going to get a lot of the ceiling and, and not a lot of the ground. Uh, I would suggest that you just hold it kind of chest level like this. Keep your elbows in. That'll help you to keep it level. And slower is better. Make sure that your settings are set to 1080p. Some of us have 4K phones. You don't need it to be 4K, uh, but 1080p, 30 frames per second. If you're gonna do any kind of voiceover, if you plan to do, have it edited, then 60 frames per second is even better if you're gonna have a professional videographer do it. Okay, if you're gonna have the sellers do it, again, a couple quick tips. It's gonna be, you're gonna come in, and you wanna pan left to right, and then stop, and then pan right to left. Then go in the opposite corner, do the same thing. Uh, keep in mind, like with video clips, the more the better. I mean, they're 10 second little clips. So I would come back in here into this, this uh, living room that you can see behind me. And I would go, I might go right to left, left to right. And then I might go bottom left, upper right, bottom right, upper left. Just give it a little bit of variety. Let the, if you're gonna edit your own stuff, uh, then you can have more to choose from. If you're going to have somebody else to edit your stuff, then they have more to choose from. Lighting, making sure that the lighting is, is good. I said this in my other video, but, uh, you know, if you can, put your back. So here's, here's an example, right? We have a window here. If my back was to this, it's providing natural light to the room. But you could see how if I'm speaking in front of it, I'm dark, the window's bright. So just knowing where the light is, and then uh, if you have any kind of audio that you wanted to tie in, whether it's an AirPod, whether it's a hard, hardwired uh, lavalier mic, uh, you could do that as well. I think that's it. 
for now, this is Jeremiah's J Man Monero. May all of your virtual showings go fantastically. <laughs> Make it a great day. All right, so I'm seeing some of the questions in the chat here. Uh, that is the pricing in New York City. Uh, Howard, in regards to if somebody's buying and flushing, you have to think that there are a lot of people who are from outside the area who are unfamiliar with what the area looks like. And in a virtual world, they may not have the opportunity to drive around and see the points of interest and things, you know, like if we're in Rochester, New York, and I'm, I'm purchasing near the water, and that may not necessarily be a waterfront listing, uh, but all those points of interest, all of that B-roll does make a difference. Uh, but you want to keep it shorter. Shorter is better, short attention spans, uh, but that's entirely up to you. You and the videographer who's editing it can uh, have that discussion. All right, moving on. Exterior videography tips. Uh, again, I did a little video for you guys. There could be times that you get there and there's a lot of road noise. It's not as quiet as you expected it to be. This, this listing particularly is on a primary road. So what I would do is start out by the road like this. Maybe get what the traffic sounds like like that. And that would then show the street scene, right? So people can see what the traffic's gonna be like, so it's not a surprise. But then show them that, okay, this one, the driveway is uh, not on the primary road, it's on the secondary road. And if it's super loud, but they can't hear you at all, don't throw away that footage, you could always fix it in post-production, you can do a voiceover or something like that, or just put music over it. Because they don't always have to hear you. You could always put text or something on the screen. Make it a great day. Okay, so again, it's different. Uh, you know, Typically, you may not want to share the fact that it's on a primary road, there's a lot of traffic, but it's a virtual world. So I would try to share as much as possible. You know, uh, we, We're not talking too much about photography, but when you're doing your video walkthrough, why wouldn't you then also include the mechanics, include your, your utilities, your electrical box, your basement, all of those areas that somebody would want to see if they were doing a showing of the home, right? You're not just going to, you know, typically a video might be a sizzle reel of all the best parts of a home. Not in this example, because it's a virtual tour. You want them to get as much of the house as possible. You're not trying to hide anything um, if you're going to go just the, the virtual tour route, okay? But if you're going to have if you're going to do the live showings, it's going to make sense for you to upgrade your Zoom account. Uh, the, Zoom is free. You can get up to 40 minutes for free. Uh, I would recommend that you upgrade. It's $14.99 a month or $150 per year. Uh, it's, it's worth it, number one, because then you'll have unlimited time, right? But the second great part about it is that you can record everything that you're doing. So talk about adding value. I have a number of examples where I'm adding value that I didn't have before. The other day I did a final walkthrough. It took me an hour where it would normally take me 30 minutes. But at the end of all that, I had a video that I could that I could save and give to the buyer that was closing on that property. And now they knew every little switch, everything about the hot tub, the pool that the seller went over in great detail. That would have never happened before, right? So it's just another way that we're exceeding expectations. Um, plus, in this example, if we're doing a live walkthrough of, of a home, I'm representing the seller I could then take that video and give it to the buyer's agent to give to his client so that they can look at it again and again, or I could use that, that virtual showing as a tour of the home, just another tour of the home if I already had one. So here are some Zoom tips and tricks. As I look at uh, you know, the list of people that are on here, I can tell when you enter into a Zoom meeting who's experienced, who's not, who could use some help. So here are some tips to get started. Uh, first thing, uh, you know, everything that I do is on Google Calendar, so you want to be sure that you you do the Google Calendar integration with Zoom. So you see in this example, uh, I I have make it a Zoom meeting on the on the left hand side there. That's because I in, when you and I'll show you a screenshot in a second. But when you go into Zoom, you integrate your Gmail account so that now every meeting that you have you can instantly make it a, a Zoom meeting or a Google Hangout or a Google Meet. Okay, I already had that on there, but I added the Zoom to it. On the right-hand side, you see where it says add guests. 
that's where you would add buyer's agent or buyer and or seller. So then everybody gets all of the details for this online showing or the virtual showing. Uh, here are two, two other tips. The first is for those of you, you know, when I pause my video, if I go like this, where is it? When, if I stop sharing, when I pause the video, there's the picture that shows up. Now, again, you're going to be using this for business purposes. I would encourage you to have, you know, a professional picture that's branded with your company name or your, your contact info so that when you mute your video, something shows up besides your name. Uh, you can do that by filling out your profile. You go into your Zoom account, uh, you have your name, and then on the left-hand side, if you haven't uploaded a photo, that's where you would do it so that when you pause your video, that's the picture that comes up, okay? And then on the lower part of that profile, uh, you see here where it says you can integrate with third-party services such as Google, Outlook, or Exchange to sync the calendar and contacts. That's where you add the, the Gmail. And that's where I said I allow Zoom to get calendar events and I allow Zoom to sync contacts. Okay, make sure you click those buttons and it goes over to it. I'm sure you've heard a lot. I was just on a Zoom webinar before this one that somebody said, I heard that the FBI said that we should be using Google Duo in this because, you know, they're going to get us with the Zoom bombing. Listen, listen, Linda. Um, <laughs> what you want to do, uh, they up... They updated the security settings, I would say seven to 10 days ago to address these issues. So if you haven't updated your Zoom in the last seven to 10, to 10 days, make sure that it's updated. Uh, and what you'll see is what I have on my screen here, the top part is lock meeting. Okay, so that means if you have a bunch of unauthorized people that are coming into your Zoom meeting, lock it down. That means nobody else can get in. Okay, if you forget to enable a waiting room, you're gonna wanna make sure that you enable a waiting room. Because just like you would if you were showing a home in person with your seller, you want to have a conversation with your seller before the other parties show up, correct? Right? I mean, it's a confidential fiduciary conversation you're having there. So I would enable the waiting room, which, and I just, I'm looking at Carolyn and Lisa because you guys are, are doing two of my videos. If you guys are the buyer's agents that are going to be showing this property, you're going to be waiting in the waiting room while I talk to the seller and explain to them the entire process. So you can't hear or see anything that we're doing. Okay, so that's why you wanna make sure that you enable the waiting room. If it's not enabled, what will happen is they can join right in and hear everything that you're saying and doing. Okay, and then you, it's up to you whether you wanna allow participants to share their screen, uh, chat or rename themselves. Uh, I always do, especially rename themselves so that if they join from like their iPad or iPhone or something like that, they can actually use put in their real name. Okay, enable the waiting room because that keeps that from happening. Uh, dress for success, okay? I know uh, Chris is on, he's gonna say pants optional, but you should at least be dressed from the waist up, okay, in a professional manner. I think, you know, we're professionals. If I'm on a virtual showing with you, I should know who the realtor is and who the client is, right? You shouldn't be in your, your hoodie and your pajamas with your wake up hair. At least, you know, get dressed like you're going to work. Uh, and, and show a, a higher level of professionalism. Uh, virtual backgrounds. So you can see right now, I'm not at a co-work space doing this presentation. I'm at a, an empty office. The empty office background would be kind of boring. Uh, you can actually go to canva.com. And if you just type in Zoom virtual backgrounds, these are four options that I have that I use that I got right from Canva. It's already uh, it's the dimensions are perfect for what you need for virtual backgrounds for uh, your Zoom account. And then you can add any kind of logo you want on top of that, customize it any way that you like. Okay, because again, it, it's going to help you to be a little bit more professional. You don't have to worry about what's in the background because let's face it, if you're going to be Zooming with other agents, they're going to be like this. What is what's in the background there? What is that? Oh, why is that such a mess? And they're going to be checking out everything that's going on behind you. Okay, that's, that's one of, we know, you guys know it's true. Okay, the second part of it is you want to look pretty. <laughs> okay, and so the, there's a couple ways that you can look pretty uh, besides visiting the, the surgeon. Uh, you know, you can enable the HD. That may or may not be to your benefit. Uh, but original ratio makes it so that it's original, not 16.9. You can choose different camera feeds if you have multiple cameras. 
but there is a checkbox there. You can see that it says touch up my appearance. Um, it, it doesn't work miracles, folks. Okay, it just it might smooth out some things and make you look a little bit better than than you may look. I guess <laughs> a little bit better doesn't doesn't change your entire appearance. Um, and then you have the other options in there. Always display participant name on their videos. I like that. Uh, turn off my video when joining a meeting in case I forget. Um, always show video preview dialogue. Um, and then spotlight my video when speaking. If you're the facilitator of that meeting, it's important to spotlight it, which means you're the one that's talking. That's the main video that comes up if they're in the speaker view uh, or the gallery view, depending. Okay, lighting is the other great thing. Uh, for those of you who have ever purchased anything at a store where that you thought you looked fantastic and then you got home and you didn't look as great, it's because of the lighting in the dressing room, lighting in, in the department store. Um, I'm currently using a, I don't know, 12 inch ring light, I want to say, but here's the difference if I turn it off. See, there's light behind me, light in front. Okay, so some of you, and I'm not keeping an eye on the chat, but some of you for the virtual background and for the lighting, you may not have the power on your device to do virtual backgrounds without a green screen. Uh, and if you try to order a green screen right now on Amazon, it's going to come seven in, in about 17 years because they're on back order. So what I would recommend is you go to Joanne Fabrics, you can go to any of those fabric places if they are open or if you can order it online and, and have it dropped at the curb or however they do that and just get a green piece of fabric. Okay, not shiny, but the, mu the muslin, like the, the felt kind of a material is what you want. You don't want it to be shiny and pull it tight and you should get a nice crisp uh, green screen background. Okay, here is a, a seller tutorial. I would again recommend, you know, this is all new to you. This is new to you. It's also new to the sellers. If you've worked with them in the past, they need help, right? And you need to be the expert. You need to be the one to kind of help uh, walk them through it. Uh, I created a seller tutorial on telling the seller how I would want them to walk through the house. This is if we're still doing that live showing. Because if not, they're gonna pick how they would walk through the house, which their only experience may be from HGTV. Okay, and that that's, could be very different than how you want them to. So here's a quick example. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. This is Jeremiah J. Mamonero. I just wanna give you a quick tutorial about how to handle the virtual showings. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. This is Jeremiah S. J. Mamonero. I just want to give you a quick tutorial about how to handle the virtual showings. So typically we want to start outside. Um, I'll edit that video in here. But we want to start outside with a curb appeal shot uh, of the, the neighborhood, the exterior of the home, what the street scene looks like because that's important to buyers. We will then come inside, okay? Come inside and I'm actually holding the, the phone horizontally, which is landscape instead of portrait because uh, we're more than likely going to be doing these virtual showings via Zoom, and so we'd want that full screen action. All right, and now we're going to, I'm going to flip it around the other way and give you a couple quick tips as we go. All right, so we're here. I came in through the door, and we'll plan the route ahead of time as far as which way you should be going, uh, but second tip would be to go in and close all the blinds and turn on all the lights that you can, okay? So I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna turn on all the lights. And then as we come into all the different rooms, stand in each corner. So here's, I have a wide angle lens on my phone. So if you have a wide angle lens, uh, make sure that you have it set for that. I can always drop one off for you. You can see the difference. That's a standard lens, that's a wide angle lens. So I would actually stand in opposite corners of the room as we're showing this. And then I would go, okay, here's our kitchen shot. Right, so I'm backing up into the corner, and then I'll do it the other way in opposite corners. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you the entire video, but you know, keep in mind, if you have a wide angle lens, and I don't have one with me, I, I left it at home, but there's a lot of just, if you went on Amazon and said, universal clip-on wide angle lens, uh, you can get one for under 30 bucks that can work on just about any device. So if you sterilize it, and you could have somebody drop it off at the house, have it messengered, have it mailed, 
don't have any contact with your client whatsoever, but drop the equipment off or have it dropped off so that they can take the equipment and then put it on their device. Because you saw when I showed you that video, that it, it's a dramatic difference between a regular lens and a wide angle lens. So if you don't have one of the newer, I'm gonna show you mine. This is, uh, I have a Samsung S10. We have three lenses on this side, and then there's two lenses on, on sorry, it's the other way, two lenses on the selfie side. One's a wide angle lens and one's a standard lens. So if, if you're due for an upgrade, now would be a fantastic time for you to do it. Um, get an S10 or, or get the, I think the, the iPhone 10 or newer, my iPhone people just go like this, it's iPhone 10 or newer that has the newer lenses, right? Okay, because um, it does make a big difference. Before that, I'd say, look, it's 1080p, it's HD, who cares? But now it does make a difference. Um, asking your seller or just order that wide angle lens online. It does make a difference. All right, Google Meet. Uh, Google Meet is the upgraded product for Google Hangouts. Again, I, I would recommend that you do the upgraded version of G Suite. Uh, it's twelve dollars a month. When I showed you my my Google Calendar, it gives me the option uh, because being a virtual agent is all about being able to adapt, right? If my client says, "Oh, I love Google Meet," okay, I can do that. Oh, I'm familiar with Zoom. I can do that. Oh, I can do Facebook Messenger. Got you. I can do Google Duel. Me too. The only the only one I might have a challenge with is if they say I have FaceTime and I'm going, I don't have an iPhone. I'm sorry, but maybe I can get one for the day. We'll figure that out. Okay, here's how it works. Welcome to Google's new tool for video conferencing, Google Hangouts Meet. Whether you're new to video conferencing with Google or are familiar with the outgoing Google Hangouts, the new Meet experience provides a streamlined way to connect with people on campus or around the globe. Just like with classic Hangouts, you can have up to 25 people join your conference. Here's what's new. A new place to begin at meet.google.com where you can start a new meeting or join an event already in progress by entering a meeting code. And don't worry, you can still add a video chat to your Google Calendar events by opening your event details, clicking Add Conferencing, and selecting Hangouts Meet. Then, all attendees join the conference by clicking the link included in the meeting invitation or by dialing in to the number provided. Once you join, your meeting tools are located at the bottom of the window. On the far left, Meeting Details shows ways to invite attendees. You can copy and paste the link and send via email, text, or chat, or you can share the dial-in number and meeting code. In the center are options for muting and unmuting your microphone and video, as well as leaving the call. To share your screen, use the Present Now button and choose to share either your entire screen or just an application window. On the far right, the three dots menu expands to show a few other tools, including your settings where you can change your default microphone and camera and play a test sound. Okay, now keep in mind, part of what we're doing and showings and you know, with the new COVID disclosure even, we can do paperwork remotely and electronically and you can share your screen with just about any of these apps as well, right? With Zoom, you can share your screen. With Google Meet, you can share your screen. So that's part of how I would go over paperwork with my client if I wanted to do the COVID disclosure, I wanted to, to review that with a, a potential buyer and buyer's agent if they're not familiar. Okay, Facebook Messenger, free and easy. This is probably the easiest video messaging platform on the planet. You don't need an, an, a link to click. All you have to do is create the group and you could, only, you could do it one person at a time if you wanted to uh, and it's free right? There's 2.2, 2.4 billion people currently on Facebook. Uh, I would imagine most of our clients are on there. If they're not, for some strange reason, uh, then you can use any of the other tools that we've discussed. But here's how it works. There's something new in Messenger. Introducing group video chat. It's a great way to get together whenever for whatever. So say you want to ring in the new year with friends from far away. No matter where they are, friends can join anytime, anywhere on whatever phone they have. We are all dressed up in our finest party attire. And it's easy to add even more friends to your group video chat. <laughs> this group is about to ring in the new year together. It's time. It's time. Three, Three two, two, one. Happy New Year! <laughs> While chatting, you can even spice it up by adding a mask. And you can come and go as you please. Everyone can still keep chatting. She's a sleep Bye. 
We stayed up. Get together whenever for whatever with new group video chat from Messenger. Okay, so that a little bit older video, but it does serve the purpose. So now it's your turn. What I want you to do is take your phones out, everybody. I want you to go to your Facebook Messenger. Hopefully you already have it. If you don't take the time to download it, I want you to just randomly pick any one of your Facebook friends and video call them right now. Okay, if we're friends on Facebook, don't call me. I'll call you. Okay, so let's take a minute. I can see your video, so I know if you're actually doing it. Somebody is calling me. <laughs> that figures, don't it? Chris, we could do it. Let's do it. Hey, Chris, how you doing, buddy? Hey, man, how's everything going? Excellent. I'm just on this webinar here. You guys can see that. Actually, let me, I'll stop sharing for a second so they can get an idea how this works. Do, do, do. Okay, so you can see I'm on. Doop. Whoa, you're in a virtual world on my. That's pretty cool. Look at that. I feel like I'm in Inception. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you on on. Oh my gosh, you wait. You were that. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I gotta hang up now. All right, so you see how easy that is? It doesn't require you to create a link. It doesn't require you to start a meeting. All it requires you to do is video call the person. If you do it with a group of people at the same time, if one of them is busy and doesn't answer, it's okay, the call still continues. So it'll say in their messenger group of messages, it'll say, okay, Chris and Jeremiah are chatting right now. You can join in at any time. Okay, keep in mind that they can join in at any time to just be ready for that if you invited them to initial chat. If you started with just you and another person, you can also then add other people onto it. So if I was gonna use this with a potential buyer, I think Carolyn and Lisa are talking right now, I can tell. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but if I was gonna do this with a potential buyer, call the buyer first, I would then talk to them and then I would add the listing agent on there, then the listing agent can add the seller on there. Make sense? Like just because I initiated the call doesn't mean that I don't. Um, so Angela, to initiate the call, you just tap the camera button at the top of the message. Looks like a little camera icon. That's all you have to do. Uh, but we'll come back to it in a second. I wanted you to try it to see how easy it is. Cause really it's all of these things you can't break. I mean, you could try, but the best thing you could do is get accounts, and just start practicing, okay? You don't have to, you know, don't practice with your clients, practice uh, with your colleagues in the office, practice with, with people you don't like, doesn't matter. Okay, so virtual showings in person, meaning you're at the home and your client is at their house. I uh, Stay home if that's what your state requires or if that's what your local board recommends or if that's what your broker recommends, uh, listen to what they say. So Facebook Messenger, like I said, it's free and easy. The other option is Google Duo. I like Google Duo because it used to only be one-to-one, -one, meaning I, if I was talking to Lucy Lacanina, just because you're on my video right now, um, if I was talking to Lucy, it used to be just her and I could chat with Google Duo mobile phone to mobile phone, but now you can have up to 12 people on there at one time, okay? Uh, you don't have to have a Gmail account, but it is only mobile to mobile, okay? But pretty easy to use. Uh, here's an example, like when I start, these are screenshots from my phone, uh, when I started, it says waiting for friends to join. I was, and I started just a test group. I added my older brother that you can see he's in the middle on the top. I, and then we added uh, our parents. That's my mom and dad on the lower left hand on the right hand side there. Uh, and they were like, this is so cool. We're all group chatting right now on the same chat. They had no experience whatsoever. First time they ever did it. They needed no additional training. I just had to download the app for them on their mobile device, okay? Google's new app, Duo, is a simple video calling service that's now available for Android and iOS. In a way, it's the company's answer to Apple's FaceTime, and it works very similarly. So here's what you need to know about Duo. First, there's Knock Knock, which gives you a preview of who is calling by firing up the camera on the other end of the line. If you're initiating the call, you'll see a little notice that says your video is visible. Android users can see Knock Knock regardless of whether Duo is opened or not. 
Okay, let me pause it right there. Did you hear what it said? Before they pick it up, they can see you. Okay, this is your one and only warning. That means you're like this, you're calling, you might be picking your nose, you're looking up your nostrils like this, trying to do your hair. Well, you do weird things before you realize people are gonna pick up the phone. So just, I warned you, okay? If you forget, it's not my fault. Go back. In iOS, though, you'll only see it if you're in the app. Otherwise, you'll just get a notification saying someone's calling you. Now, before you worry about seeing anything you don't want to see from the other line, know that you can only receive knock-knocks from people who are in your contact list. You can also block individual people from calling you. And if knock-knock really isn't your thing, you can disable it altogether. At this point, you might be wondering what makes it different than Google's other communication platform, Hangouts. Well, according to Google, Duo is supposed to be way more specialized. Whereas Hangouts is cross-platform and supports group chats and multi-way video and messaging, Duo does one thing and one thing only, video calls. Unlike Hangouts, it reaches people through their phone numbers, not their emails. And the best difference between it and Hangouts, it uses end-to-end -end encryption. Because Duo is more streamlined, it has a very minimalistic user interface. Before you start a call, you'll see icons to start a video call and your contacts. During a call, you'll see yourself and icons to mute audio, switch cameras, and end the call. Video from the other line fills up your screen and that's pretty much it. For more about Google's Duo app, check out our hands-on at C. Okay, again, pretty easy, just takes a little bit of practice. All right, our last scenario that we're gonna talk about, you call the listing agent to show their listing, right? Representing the buyer. A lot of this is going to be the same, but here are some questions for you to ask. Uh, take a picture of this so you have it. Uh, but is there a virtual tour, right? You got to act like you know. Is there a virtual tour on the property? Is that how the seller prefers it to be shown? Uh, hopefully that it would be in the public or the, or the private remarks, but these are all questions that you can ask. Is the seller doing virtual showings? Meaning is the seller themselves doing the virtual showings? Can I do a virtual showing? Which means can I go to the property? Perhaps it's unoccupied. Um, and, and they're allowing me to do that. Is it occupied? Are they doing unaccompanied showings? Again, follow your broker's directives, whatever they say you should be doing. Go to nicearcovidupdates.com, but the current FAQ says we should not be facilitating those unaccompanied showings. However, if the seller says that they would like to talk to the buyer, then we can give the information and walk away. Let them do it, but again, listen to your broker, follow all the recommendations on what you should and should be doing uh, from nightsarcovidupdates.com. All right, seller, can the seller, uh, has the seller done a home inspection? Seller do a home inspection? I guess I, I have a typo there. Uh, or I talk like a caveman. I think typically I wasn't a big like pre-inspection, pre-listing inspection type of agent, and maybe you weren't either. But because like buyers do need peace of mind, I think more than ever, this would make sense, right? Have the seller do the inspection, have it done by an engineer uh, because they are, they are essential at this point. Have that and then have that in the attachment, have that in the remarks. Like we've already done an inspection, you're free to do an inspection on your own, uh, but here's everything that was found, if there was anything. And this is what we did to rectify those issues. Okay, and then also I, I'm hearing a lot about home warranties. Again, just products that provide peace of mind because if a buyer can't get in and see it, they want a little bit of reassurance if something does happen down the road, what kind of guarantee warranty can they have? Uh, and then, you know, I love I love the bomb bomb. You could also take the videos, the tours that you create and send that to your sphere, send that to anybody who's interested, send it to your database. Uh, every time you have a listing via bomb bomb, you can upload that video into it uh, and you can know who plays it. So you know who has interests, you can know who clicks the link. That's the same video from before. So fancy equipment, you don't really need any. Okay, my recommendation again, your smartphone, uh, your audio, and if, if you're gonna watch, if you're gonna, uh, my buddy Chris, he has a, uh, a mobile videography webinar today. I think he posted it in the chat, but your smartphone is good. The lighting I talked about, audio is the third thing. Uh, you can see I'm using AirPods here. These are fantastic as far as wireless audio is concerned because I could walk away from my device. I mean, I'm all the way back here and you can still hear me okay. Uh, whereas if I was hardwired in, I do have, I do have hard, if I showed you over here, hardwired uh, 
lavalier microphone that can plug into my computer as well in the case that my battery dies. Okay, so what's next? You can go to jmanseminars.com. That's how you can follow me and figure out when our next webinars are gonna be. But nicearcovidupdates.com, you should bookmark that. Check back daily because that is updated on the daily. They have a fantastic FAQ uh, that's really clearly outlines what you should and should be doing. Okay, and keep in, keep in mind, nothing is impossible. Impossible is nothing. Uh, we're at a time that we have never seen before and you have to focus on solutions rather than problems, right? Don't think about what we can't do. Think about how you can use technology video and resources like myself to help solve the problems we have and exceed the expectations of our clients. Okay, so I just wanna thank you, everybody. That brings us right to the perfect time, I think. And then I'm gonna take a look at the chat and see if you have any questions, but feel free to unmute yourself. But what are you wearing, LOL? Um, I said about me, I don't know. Thank you, pants optional. Thank you, thank you, LOL, but what are you wearing? Okay, too large to email. So when you finish taking the video on the iPhone, it's typically too large to email it to a buyer. What do you suggest? With BombBomb, Bomb, you can upload that video. It's gonna encode it, and then you can send that to anybody via email, via text, via Facebook Messenger, any number of ways. So BombBomb's the answer, answer for that. Um, hi, mom and dad, thank you. PTD, you okay, got that. Open Messenger with the person you wanna call, then hit the camera in the upper right-hand corner. Thank you, Chris. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself. This is open, open mic night. Jay, could you please just uh, remind them that this is being recorded and you're gonna be giving it to NYSAR and NYSAR is gonna be sharing it so that if they wanna review it or other people wanna see it, it will be available, okay? Yeah, if other people couldn't get on, I'm sorry for their luck. I'm kidding. Um, we are gonna, I'm gonna take this, it'll be shared with NYSAR. It'll also be posted on my Facebook page at Jayman Speaks. Uh, which then I guess NYSAR will share it from there as well onto their social media. So you can view it, but everybody should have been able to get on because we weren't capped out. Um, so I'm not sure, but it seems like the Zoom tutorials is needed more than ever because almost every Zoom webinar that I have or meeting that I have scheduled, 100% of the people don't make it on. And I know there's a lot of options, but I think some people just have trouble getting on. Um, let's see. Mr. Fancy Lenses, yes. Thank you so much. Where can I get the replay? Yep. And it, I have a list of everybody that's registered, so we'll send it out, but Bomb Bomb is, um, we'll be posting it. It's recorded, thank you. Is there a fee for Bomb Bomb? Yes. Uh, it's, it's actually $24.99 a month, I believe, or $300 for the year. I have a question. Yes, your name? I can't see it's you. Teresa Carmona with Robert DeFalco. Hey, uh, Teresa, how are you? Good. Regarding the virtual um, backgrounds, yes. so I had heard what you mentioned about the, the green screen because I've been trying to do a, a virtual background. So I clicked on it now, click, when you click on virtual background, and let's say you go to um, upload one of them. So like, for example, I clicked on grass. So it's, yeah. it's telling me my computer doesn't meet requirements. Yeah. To yeah, so to use virtual background without a green screen, your Mac OS version needs to be 10.13 or higher. So what does that mean? I have to upload or? No, so you're gonna either need a green screen. It initially told me that. Uh, make sure that your Zoom is updated to the latest version uh, because okay. for some reason, uh, it told me that originally and then when I updated my Zoom, I'm able to use it. I don't have a green screen, but if you can't, because there's a certain amount of processing power you need to have, and I would imagine if you have a MacBook, you should have that. But uh, if you need to get a green screen, like I said, just go to like any of the fabric places, the craft like fabric places, right. get a uh, like a lime green piece of fabric, six mm -hmm. by nine, get some clothespins, just make sure it's not shiny. Like you don't want it to be shiny because that shininess, then will you'll notice it in the background itself. Okay. Right. So like when I'm logging off now, I leave the meeting, there is yeah. something that comes up on my screen um, to update. And I keep, I think I must have did it five times already and it keeps updating. And now yeah. the most latest thing it's telling me to install something. Is that safe yeah. to do? Do the installation? Yeah. Yeah. I, and again, I, 
I don't want to be your IT guy and tell you to, to do it, but I would, that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. um, because there was a download to update and then you have to install that update. Part of it is the updated security for the zoom bombing that I talked about. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah. And then you'll just have to restart everything to make sure that that installed properly. Okay. But it's not going to be like, um, you know, somebody trying to, uh, you know, hack in. It shouldn't be no. okay. <laughs> as long as it says like it's zoom.exe, uh, you know, just make sure that it's a legit file. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Patricia Wenzel. I'm just looking at you. You're one of my video people that I can see right now. Uh, Tiffany, Steven, Joanne. Any other questions? If not, it's Friday. I'm about to punch the clock just like Fred Flintstone when he slides down the dinosaur. Okay. Uh, be sure if you get an opportunity, send an email to the education department at NYSAR. They're working overtime really to provide all of these resources for you guys. They're working harder than ever, I would say. Uh, poor Priscilla decided to retire and now she's working harder than she ever has. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you haven't met Kristen, uh, she's, she's our new education director. So just send them a thank you because I think too, too often things, they only hear about complaints. They don't hear about the good things. So if you see any value in anything that we provide, please just send them a quick message. Okay. Can you tell us that email again? What's uh, I think it's at, George, if you want to comment, I think it's education at NYSAR.com. Oh uh, boy. If you wanted to send anything nice like that, it'd be great. We'd love to hear it. It'd be educate at NYSAR.com. Oh, educate. Okay. Can I say to everybody that I took your technology class the last three days, it's amazing. If you guys get an opportunity to take the NYSAR technology, great class. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, folks, um, and let your people know the ones that didn't make it on in your office or in your, at your board. Again, this will be posted so that it's a resource for you guys again and again, but this is fluid, it's continuously changing. Uh, so there may be an updated version next week if something changes. Okay. And thanks, Amy. Thank you, Jane. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you, Jane. That's right. Namaste, everybody. <laughs>